What is up, watch fam? I am Christian, the curator of the Theo and Harris Watch Shop, and today I'm going to be talking about one of history's most important and versatile watches, Omega's Seamaster. Boom, watch fam. Before I get into the thick of my passion and my argument for owning a Seamaster, a quick wristwatch check. I am very appropriately wearing my vintage Omega Seamaster, a lovely watch that I will dive more into at the end of today's conversation. It has some great patina and dollar for dollar, as you'll find out in a minute, it's almost impossible to beat. So let's do it. There is a world of Omega beyond the Speedmaster. The watches the brand manufactured, whether under the name Seamaster, DeVille, Constellation, or really under no name at all quite often, are some of the most revered in the vintage market. Why? In a nutshell, their purpose, how well they served it, and in how many ways they did. Their launch and execution of the Seamaster model exemplifies that. It was billed from its release in 1948 for town, sea, and country. That was the marketing tagline. Refined enough for dinner, resistant enough for the ocean, and robust enough for labor. It's rare even today to find a watch that can do so much so simply. But that's exactly what made the Seamaster, in so many ways, the people's watch. The simple fact that with a Seamaster, you had no need for another watch. Even the most economical entry-level watches in their collection were cased in stainless steel. Now, while today we may take stainless steel for granted as the least luxurious material, back in the middle of the 20th century, there were certainly other options, other less reliable, much less expensive options. Chrome plating is a great one that comes to mind. And while chrome plating was not inherently bad or evil, Omega set the bar higher than that, while so many of their other contemporaries just didn't. It's a great testament to their level of quality. And then you've got their beautiful in-house movements, which beyond their beauty were incredibly reliable, not just for their original owners, but as we can now say with confidence today, 40, 50, 60, 70 years down the line, just as reliable as they were when they were originally shipped from Switzerland. And the variations are endless. Gilt, linen, chamfer, straight lugs, pie pens, Arabic dials. There are so many details to get lost in, in the vintage Omega world. This was my 21st birthday gift from my folks. It dates to 1950 and even putting nostalgia and, and the emotional value aside, I love it. I'm consistently blown away by the accuracy of the movement, the versatility of the design, and yeah, it feels great to own a significant piece of history, a piece of one of the world's most important and admired brands. Over the last five years, I've become so passionate about the vintage Omega space. While yes, I have sourced and owned and sold some of the most collectible vintage relics, whether it be uh, you know, a gilt uh, 1675 or AP Royal Oak Trobillon or Gina Daytona's or, or a rare Patex, whatever it might be, I still get so much enjoyment out of the nuances and intricacies and, and really uh, the quality and beauty that we can still find. Of course, it's not easy, but that can still find in the vintage Omega world. And it is worth noting that in the grand scheme of watches, these pieces are relatively very affordable, under you know, $2,000 in so many cases. And for me, someone who has always been from day one interested uh, and passionate about watches in that price range, it, it's tough to find a better value piece. If you don't own a piece of vintage Omega history already, I highly suggest that you consider one for your next watch. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like this video if you liked it and subscribe to our channel at Theo and Harris. Sure, that's a lot of money, but if you compare that figures that are fetched for other significant Rolex sports models and the creme de la creme, the top of those categories, it's actually kind of a bargain, and arguably, the story is actually better. Or how about a later model, like this watch, the 16600. It was manufactured in 2004, and to many, its proportions alone